Here we are going to discuss about uh, the major thalamic nuclei and their afferent and efferent connections. So first let us talk about uh, the anterior nucleus. The anterior nucleus receives hypothalamic input from the mammillary nucleus by means of mammillothalamic tract and the same projects into the cingulate gyrus and it is the part of the Pape circuit of emotion which is the part of the limbic system. And lesion of the anterior nucleus of the thalamus result in memory impairment because the Pape circuit is the one which is responsible for intelligence and memory. Next is about the ventral nuclei. We can see here there are numerous in number. These ventral nuclei are divided into anterior, lateral, posteromedial and posterolateral nuclei. The anterior and lateral nuclei are motor relays and posterior nuclei are sensory relays. This is how motor as well as sensory information relay in the thalamus but at the different nuclei. First is the ventral anterior nucleus. This ventral anterior nucleus receives input from the globus pallidus as well as from the substantia nigra and it projects diffusely to the prefrontal cortex, orbital cortex and premotor cortex which is the broadman area number 6. And next one is the ventral lateral nucleus. This ventral lateral nucleus relays information between primary cortex and the supplementary motor cortex and also the dentate nucleus of the cerebellum. These are the three important structures. Along with this the globus pallidus and substantia nigra inputs also received by this. It projects to the motor cortex that is Broadman area 4 and the supplementary motor cortex which is Broadman area 6. These are the efferents. And next one is one of the very important one which is called as ventral postromedial. The ventral postromedial nucleus of thalamus receives trigeminothalamic tracts and after receiving these tracts the fibers which are projected into the ventral postromedial into the somastatic area which is also called as somatosensory area of the cerebral cortex known as Broadman area 312. The gustatory pathway which is the pathway of taste originates in the solitary nucleus and projects via central tegmental tract to the ventral postromedial and to the gustatory cortex of the post central gyrus, frontal operculum and insular cortex. The taste pathway is ipsilateral. And next one is the ventral posterolateral nucleus of thalamus. So this ventral posterolateral nucleus of thalamus relays information mainly from the spinothalamic tracts and the medial lemniscus. It projects to the somatosensory cortex that is Broadman areas 312 as well as to the post central gyrus. And next is called as the pulvinar nucleus. The pulvinar nucleus is the largest nucleus of the thalamus and it projects to the posterior heteromodal cortices called as PTO cortex and it is involved in the integration of the sensory and spatial information. And this one mainly receives input from the lateral and medial geniculate bodies as well as the superior colliculus. So this one plays a crucial role in the integration of the visual, auditory as well as somastatic inputs. An important clinical correlate what you need to know over here is the lesions of the pulvinar nuclei results in visual spatial, 
perpetual and language disturbances, particularly sensory aphasia and hemispatial neglect. And the metathalamus is the one which consists of the medial geniculate nucleus, which is the major relay center for the auditory information, as well as the lateral geniculate nucleus, which is the major relay center for the visual information. The lateral geniculate nucleus receives input from the optic tract and project into the primary visual cortex called as Broadman area 17. And the same medial geniculate nucleus is the major relay center for auditory information where it receives information mainly from the inferior colliculus and projects into the primary auditory cortex called as Broadman area 41 and 42. And the last is the intralaminar nuclei which are enclosed within the internal medullary lamina. So the lesions of the intralaminar nuclei results in disturbances in attention and arousal. So next is the reticular nuclei of the thalamus. The reticular nuclei or reticular nucleus of the thalamus surrounds the thalamus as a thin layer of GABAergic neurons and embedded in the external medullary lamina on the lateral surface of the nuclei. The reticular nuclei of the thalamus mainly receives input as well as projects the inhibitory output from other thalamic nuclei. So it is the only circuit which operates completely intrathalamic. But remember it is inhibitory in nature and the neurons are GABAergic. Next one is the centromedian nucleus. The centromedian nucleus is the largest intralaminar nucleus and it is reciprocally connected to the motor cortex that is Broadman area 4 and this centromedian nucleus receives input mainly from the globus pallidus and it projects the fibers to the striatum which means caudate nucleus and putamen and projects diffusely to the entire neocortex. Next one is the medio dorsal nucleus which is also called as dorsomedial nucleus of the thalamus. So like previous one the dorsomedial nucleus of the thalamus is reciprocally connected to the prefrontal cortex. It has abundant connections with the intralaminar nuclei. It mainly receives input from the amygdala, substantia nigra and temporal neocortex. So when it is destroyed, memory loss occurs and it is called as Wernicke-Korsakoff syndrome. And the mediodorsal nucleus plays an important role in the expression of affect, emotion and behavior which is the main function of the limbic system. So this is what is about uh, the detailed description regarding the thalamic nuclei. Now, arterial supply of the thalamus. The primary blood supply of the thalamus is mainly from the posterior cerebral artery. It is the chief artery which supplies the major portion of the thalamus, which is the posterior cerebral artery. There are other contributing branches from the posterior communicating artery, also supplies the thalamus after passing through the posterior perforated substance. So this is what we need to know about uh, the arterial system of the thalamus. So by this we completed the detailed gross anatomy of the thalamus.